Hello, I'm Lara Rodriguez, a PhD student in astronomy education. My talk is about astronomy teacher training programs in Chile. This study's main motivation is that Chile is home of the world's largest telescopes, but less than a third of the population declare having some astronomical knowledge. In this context, more astronomy educational activities have been offered in Chile in the last few years, especially professional development programs for teachers, but these programs have not been systematized or evaluated. Plus, in a previous study on the astronomy content knowledge of Chilean teachers, we found that primary school teachers who participated in professional development programs do not have a higher content knowledge than those teachers with no previous training. So it seems that at least in primary education, astronomy professional development programs offered in Chile are not very effective. This motivated us to inquire about these programs, so this study aims to characterize the astronomy professional development programs offered to primary and secondary school teachers in Chile in the last five years. To build our sample, we performed an extensive online search and found 20 programs, and after contacting all of them, 16 agreed to participate in this research. Once we had our sample, during 2021 and 22, we send them a questionnaire called PDPAP. PDPAP is an online survey with 41 items, mainly multiple choice, that considers the main characteristics of an effective professional development program, both general and astronomy ones. After applying this questionnaire, we found that these 16 programs were mostly in person, but some changed into virtual due to the pandemic. They were executed from 1 to 30 times, and they were offered across all Chilean regions, predominantly in the north and in the center. The institutions that organized these programs were mainly astronomy departments within universities, and also international observatories and all formal educational centers. As for financing, the programs were mainly funded by international observatories and the Chilean National Research Agency. The programs were mostly executed during teachers' vacations or weekends, and most of the programs were concentrated over a short period of time, like a whole intensive week. The average number of participants per edition ranged from 6 to 100 teachers, and the programs were offered mainly to both primary and secondary education teachers. And when offered to both levels, most of the programs mixed primary and secondary education teachers in the same classes. As for duration, the programs ranges from 2 to 40 hours, and they can be distributed in three types. Six programs with 2 to 8 hours duration, six programs with 12 to 20 hours, and four programs with 30 to 40 hours. These programs with longer duration were mainly offered by universities. Observatories and non-formal educational centers tended to offer shorter programs. As for contents, the programs offered a variety of astronomical topics, and all programs included at least three topics in one edition, and some of them included six or even more, except one exclusively about stars. Even most short programs with a few hours duration included several topics in the same edition. 87% of the programs reported checking the curriculum to align its contents and levels. 75% reported checking misconceptions to address them in class, and 87% reported including pedagogical contents in the program, together with the disciplinary ones. As for the learning methodologies, all programs used traditional lectures, and most of them also included practical classes and group work. Telescope observation, visits to astronomical center, and working with real data were also common practice, accepted in the short programs. However, methodologies directed towards actual teachers' practice in their school, like creating their own resources, planning their lessons, or simulating classes, were not that common. And this kind of methodology, when present, was offered basically by the programs organized by universities. As for evaluation, almost half of the programs did not use any kind of initial assessment. Those that performed an initial evaluation were mainly on the expectations towards the program or astronomical and scientific knowledge. As for final evaluation, almost all programs inquired about course satisfaction, and some evaluated astronomical scientific knowledge mainly to grade the participant teachers. Regarding following up with the participant teachers in their practices, most programs only provided means of contact, basically an email address if the teachers have some afterward question. 
but only two programs still have some time and soft institutional agreements with schools for afterwards implementations. Finally, the main reported challenges faced by the program's organizers were the lack of support in the schools for their teachers' participation in the program, getting funds, and the teachers' lack of previous astronomy knowledge in adapting the classes to different knowledge levels. So now we reach the conclusions and some recommendations. First, we found a considerable number of astronomy teacher training programs offered in Chile in the last five years, which is very positive, and indicates an organizing and financing disposition from the institutions. Also, still on the positive side, almost every program reported and aligning their contents with curricular topics, considering misconceptions, including pedagogical contents, using hands-on material, and giving opportunities for reflection and feedback. However, they were not so focused on teachers' actual practice, like planning their own lesson or simulating their future classes. Furthermore, we found that most of the programs included many astronomical topics per edition, even some of the shorter programs, which make us wonder whether these contexts were treated with enough time for actual learning. Also, almost half of our sample mixed primary and secondary education teachers in the same class and we believe that's not positive, especially for the primary education teachers who usually have a lower level of previous astronomical knowledge. Moreover, only a few programs had some type of initial assessment. So, our first recommendation is to focus on teachers' needs when organizing a professional development programs in astronomy. Include fewer topics so they can be treated with more time, separate teachers from different levels so that the classes can be according to their specific contents and needs, do a previous knowledge and assessment so you can build the program by understanding the current baseline of participant teachers' knowledge, and direct the class towards teachers' practice, helping them with future implementation by developing useful resources that can directly apply in the classroom. Another important conclusion regards program's duration. We found that many of them lasted only a few hours, and almost all programs concentrated their classes in a small and intensive time period. So our second recommendation is to invest in larger duration programs so that the astronomy and pedagogical contents can be treated with enough time and deepness, and also try to distribute the programs in weekends within school period so that teachers can apply what they learn with their students and then go back to the program and get feedback in a more interactive and effective process. Another conclusion was that few programs performed some type of final assessment other than satisfaction survey, and very few followed up the participant teachers in their subsequent professional practice. So our third and last recommendation is to include several instances of evaluation and to follow up with the participant teachers by generating partnerships with schools, so you can monitor the program's effectiveness and impact in a logic of continuous improvement. Thank you!